uh, Tuku Rorangi Morgan, you've been involved in the design of co-governance for many years now. How do you describe it? What is co-governance? Uh, kia ora, me ngārangi. Uh, for us on the Waikato River, it's about the highest order of co-governance, equal numbers working together with our treaty partners. In this instance, uh, there's a mix of uh, commercial industry representatives as well as councillors. So this is, uh, this is about a opportunity for the river iwi to have their say, to make meaningful, discuss, uh, uh, meaningful and significant decisions about the health and well-being of the longest river in this country, the Waikato River. 140, uh, uh, 476 kilometres from Lake Topo all the way to the to, uh, to the outfall in the sea. 40% of our river goes into uh, nourish Aucklanders, has been for some time. So uh, for us, this is about a treaty relationship that's an enduring partnership that's built on trust and confidence to do one thing, to uh, work uh, cohesively and collectively to try and improve the health and well-being of our tupuna awa. Ka pai tuku is talking there, um, precious about um, you know co-governance arrangements and treaty settlements, one that he's been involved with for the last couple of decades. But you know, I guess are we having a watershed moment at the moment? The pushback, you know, that the reaction to uh, in increasing the efforts of co-governance. Yes, and, and I would say that that pushback to the criticism is um, driven by three things, one being awareness, and there's an increasing awareness of uh, our New Zealand history, the impacts of colonisation, enduring impacts of colonisation on Māori, um, that combined with an increased awareness of the opportunity that exists from operating within a TDT partnership relationship. And also, um, New Zealanders are becoming more aware of the sophistication of Māori approaches and how that benefits us. When you combine those things with most New Zealanders like fairness and I think Ben wrote an article which said New Zealanders prioritise a fair go. Combine those two things with the rising awareness and visibility of Māori success it culminates in people wanting change and they're looking at Māori as potentially having some of those answers. If I think of Ngāti Whātuorake as an example, we raised um, we increased our asset base from 350 million to 1.5 billion in a 10 year time frame that was a th just under a 30 percent year-on-year -year growth in assets and in anyone's books that is a great result but that result came as a res, um, came through the application of our values and our Māori approaches and so people are looking for more dynamic leadership and they recognise that Māori have some of those answers. Ben, um, you know, Tuku's talking about an arrangement there which is a natural resource and, it, and it's been a pretty successful one um, and I think it was actually the National Government, it was Chris Finlayson, you probably were working for him at that time. But um, why do you think at the moment we're seeing such an emotional reaction? The fear around co-governance from some quarters, and it's not universal, uh, it comes from it being unknown. People th people don't know or they think they don't know what co-governance is. And people are afraid of new things, you know. It's actually pretty understandable. We've we've been through this before. I, when I was working for Finlayson down in Wellington, we went through this with the first round of uh, co-governance or co-management agreements for natural resources. T you know, 12 years ago, Radio New Zealand would lead its midday news with the story about a, a co-governance agreement with, you know, over a forest park in the middle of the North Island. Um, and, you know, you'd have comments from all these sort of scared lobby groups who were worried that it meant they were going to be cut off <laughs> or that people were going to lose something. Now, the fear around that abated and, you know, much more significant co-governance agreements were signed without any sort of public alarm. And the reason is because nothing happened, <laughs> you know, in terms of the everyday person's uh, experience of, of, of their lives and of, of, of their participation, you know, nothing really changed from their perspective. And so it became harder and harder for opponents to whip up this kind 
of fear. Mm. Now it's been sort of expanded into this sort of wider area. And so there's new opportunities to kind of alarm people. Um, and, and, you know, I think what Precia said, I think, is, is true. Uh, there are a lot of New Zealanders who don't understand that when we're talking about co-governance with iwi, we're not talking about you know, some some you know village in the middle of nowhere. With, you know, we're not talking about the you know these are sophisticated entities. You know, who have strong. Track Although they are iwi who are representing some villages in the middle of nowhere, no doubt. <laughs> Tuku, can I come to you because the dominance of non-Maori in politics and powerful spaces? Do you think this is changing? I don't think so. Actually, um, I thought that actually when we when we cut the deal and signed uh, with Pinnison. 12 years ago, I thought that actually we were, uh, we were reaching a point of maturity. But clearly, um, there, are, there are politicians uh, who have forgotten their own history. Uh, uh, the issue that I have is, is that uh, uh, when we uh, work with the National Party, uh, you had Rodney Hyde, uh, the ACT leader, working at the hip of both Key and also Finlayson. So, um, you know, there, uh, there have been uh, times in our history where actually people have recognised the, uh, the fruits and the benefits of collectivity and working together. The issue that I have is that uh, um, you will always get politicians, uh, when we're uh, running close to an election, they'll always find an excuse to, to, uh, to, uh, to hammer the Māori, uh, to, uh, because in the end, Politics in this country is about the tyranny of the majority. But we're a sophisticated people. As, you know, Patience has, um, has uh, uh, reaffirmed across this country, you know, uh, the Māori asset value is in excess of 100 billion. Waikato Tainui is 2 billion now. We're a sophisticated iwi with um, a cohesive, a long-term economic strategy and we're con you know, we are contributing to the tapestry of this and the lifeblood of this country. So, you know, we, we, uh, uh, we know which, uh, which way is up. Ten but there are politicians who will continue to undermine uh, the successes of people like us for, uh, for the benefit of garnering extra votes. Tenakwe, Simple as that. Tenakwe.